Yo, Jay Blanked here. What if you could get a sharp, high contrast screen paired with a powerful and easy to use microcontroller, all in one unit that even runs on a battery? Well, that's the promise of this little guy here. The Waveshare RP2350 Touch AMOLED 1.43B. In this video, we're going to get right into it. We'll check out the hardware, see what makes this screen and its processor so special, and get it running with a quick demo. And at the end, I'll give you an honest take on who this board is for and if it's worth the money. Let's kick things off with two things that really makes this device a real standout. One, the processor, and two, the screen. The screen is not your average TFT or LCD. This is a 1.43 inch circular AMOLED display. Unlike LCDs that have a backlight that's always on, every single pixel in an AMOLED screen creates its own light. That means when a pixel is black, it's completely off, giving you true deep blacks and an incredible contrast ratio. The resolution is 466 by 466, which is super sharp for a display this small. Text looks crisp and fine details are super clear. When you see it next to a regular LCD, the difference is night and day. But a pretty screen is nothing without a good brain to drive it. And this is where things get really interesting. The board is actually powered by an RP2350B. This chip is based on the architecture of Raspberry Pi's RP2040, but adds some serious muscle. It has a unique dual core, dual architecture design. You get a pair of high performance ARM Cortex cores, but here's the twist. You can choose to run a pair of RISC-V cores instead. This gives you the flexibility to either stick with the familiar ARM ecosystem or play around with the up and coming RISC-V platform. Think of it as having one core for all the heavy lifting, like drawing to the display, and the other for handling background tasks like sensor reading or communications. This setup plus 520 kilobytes of SRAM and 16 megabytes of flash means you've got plenty of power for complex graphical interfaces without the lag or screen tearing you'd see on cheaper displays. Okay, now that we know what's inside, let's take a closer look at the board itself. Just recently, we reviewed two RP2350 Touch LCDs that almost resembled an Apple Watch. Later in that video, we reviewed the 1.28 inch version in depth, including unboxing and the initial provided demo. Today, we're taking a look at the Big Brother, which has a much better approach as far as the detail and the hardware itself. Well, I turn the brightness up, we can turn the brightness down. So unlike the 1.28 inch version, this one has the boot and reset button right on the outside of the case. And it also has an SD card slot. Not only that, it has a much better example and you can control the brightness directly on the example instead of being forced with how bright it was in my other video. Since my initial video, I have made some drivers for both the 1.28 inch version and the bigger 1.49 version. Um, so that's what we are seeing here. And as I touch the screen, it tells me the gesture. It tells me where I touched that and then it also tells me the battery percentage and voltage. Now, what I like most about this is the form factor. It came in this case like this, and that means I can travel with it too. We take this off, and then we can pull the device off with our index finger, like so. And here's the device. Now, I have the 1.43B version, which has this uh, case. Um, and just like the little brother, I would have to unscrew these four screws 
um, to look into the back a bit. But that's really not necessary now since we have our boot button, which is looking this way, the boot button here on the left, and we have our uh, reset button there on the right, and we have our USB-C, and then we have our SD card, here we go, SD card, and then we have our GPIO here and here. And it looks like this when you have them connected, it looks like a ground, um, more than likely a 3v3, and I'm not sure what these orange and yellow are yet. But what I really like about this device is how capable it is to put into other projects. So you can mount it like this, have these pointing down, and then we'll also take a look at the GPIO inside. So here is the back removed. We can compare that to the 1.28 inch. Very similar, but you notice we do have um, more GPIOs um, and some more things in here. And we can see that our wires that were sticking out, they are actually... Okay, so I see. So the left wires that were sticking out, these are for I squared C, and this is for UART. So that's pretty cool. And this part is for the battery charge and discharge. Um, and this one is for uh, the RTC. Now, one thing I did notice, we actually didn't have to take that off because this is actually very descriptive and matches up with what we were looking for. So we can put this back on with the USB facing down like this and like that. And these, see if I can get this closer to the camera, these show us what our ports are here. So that top green row is for the top row there. And then the bottom row that starts green is for the bottom row there. Okay, after all of that, who should actually buy this device? Well, let's start with the good stuff. The display is obviously the star of the show. If your project needs a small round screen and you want it to look amazing, this is one of the best you can find. The deep blacks and vibrant colors are awesome and the processing power is a massive win too. The dual core dual architecture RP2350 is a workhorse, giving you plenty of power for smooth graphics. The built-in sensors and battery management are also super convenient, saving you a lot of extra wiring. And the best part, this board is surprisingly cheap. So who is the ideal customer? This is perfect for anyone building wearables like a custom smartwatch or a fitness tracker. It's great for IoT devices that need a nice local display like a smart home controller or a mini weather station. To wrap it up, the WaveShare Touch 1.43 AMOLED is a fantastic little powerhouse. It packs a stunning display, a super capable microcontroller, and a bunch of useful features right on the board. It might be overkill for simple projects, but for anyone looking to build a compact device with a high-end feel, this board is the real deal. It honestly feels like the tiny display we've all been waiting for. So what would you build with a screen this good? A custom smartwatch, a tiny retro gaming device? Definitely let me know your ideas down in the comments below. Now, if you found this guide helpful, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews of the latest and greatest maker hardware. I'm Jay Blinked, thanks for watching. Peace.